What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a little bit of a look at Digimon Starter Decks. Now, we're going to be looking specifically at the Red Starter Deck here because it is largely considered the best of the three. And we're going to be asking the question of essentially, is it a little bit too good? Is this a better starter deck than it should be? Is it causing problems by being rather good? Now, one thing that I really do need to point out right off the bat, do not go and base scalper prices for starter decks now unless you absolutely have to. Unless you have no choice, you have a, a tournament coming up, for instance, and you really do have to go and get the cards right now for the physical tournament, then okay, fine, I get that entirely. But if you don't, please, 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 please just try and avoid them for the time being. Because the prices are silly. These starter decks are $10 and come with a booster pack, right? They are fantastic value. I love the irony that when these came out, people were really angry because in Japan they were $5 but didn't come with a booster pack and cars are cheaper there anyway. Whereas now, these are selling for like $35. And if you have a look round on eBay, and look, there are plenty of others. But if you list this red starter deck on eBay for like $35... It is going to sell pretty much straight away. You can sell these for $35. Easy. You shouldn't. That is scalping and it is wrong. But hey ho. Fact of the matter is the red starter deck is good to the point where now as soon as it does actually come into stock anywhere. It is bought by people that want it and people that don't. But essentially all you're really doing here is buying it at $10 so somebody else can't. So you can then sell it to that same person for $35. You're making $25 off a member of the community. It doesn't take any kind of skill. It's not entrepreneurial. It's scummy. Please don't do it. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about whether it is a little bit too good. And the answer might be yes. You see, the reason, there's a few reasons why it's selling for so much at the moment. But one of the main reasons is all the cards are exclusive. Now, for what it's worth, I love this. Because over in Pokemon, I love starter decks, but I very rarely buy starter decks. And the reason essentially is that Pokemon starter decks don't have any exclusive cards. Generally speaking, what they have is one card that comes as a special hollow. So the Charizard theme deck that everyone's been going a little bit nutty for lately. There's no card in there which is new. There is nothing in there which cannot be pulled somewhere else. But there is the Charizard that has a different holofoil pattern to the regular Charizard. And that essentially makes it sought after. It makes people go, oh, maybe I do want this. But I end up not getting many theme decks because there's no real incentive to get them. Whereas Digimon Starter decks, every single card in them is exclusive. If you go and buy yourself a red theme deck, it's going to have a 50 card deck. And there are going to be four digit armor. And every single card in that deck is going to be brand new exclusive and can only be gotten in the deck. The issue comes in when these cards are a little bit playable. So let's take Gaia Force. Because let's face it, right? When we're talking about red starter decks, Gaia Force has got to be the poster child for it. Gaia Force is probably, up till this point in the game, the best option card we've seen. It is an 8 cost option card that just lets you delete one of your opponent's Digimon. It is worth pointing out that when this comes out as a security card, you just get to do it for free. So you don't pay 8, you, you pay 0, and then you're off and rolling and good to go. Clearly that's the better way round. But you get to delete any one of your opponent's Digimon, you get to just go right. Whatever you've got, no matter how big and bad it is, anything that you've got on your side of the field which seems a little bit threatening to me, I can just literally pay this and roll. This is largely a good thing. The problem is, not only is this exclusive to the starter deck, but there are actually only two copies in the starter deck. So a lot of red decks now, in the past, moving forward, are going to have four copies of Gaia Force in. But you need to buy two red starter decks 
in order to actually get this. Now, incidentally, this is one of the reasons I love that they come with a booster pack, because I bought two copies of each of the starter decks, not to sell on or any of that garbage, purely because I wanted to have a playset of each of the starter deck cards. So I had to buy two of each of the starter deck in order to do so. And I quite like the fact that even though the second starter deck I was essentially buying for 10 cards, I at least got a booster pack to tide me over. Now, if we're trying to look at the value of these kind of cards, it is pretty hard to figure out. But if we go and have a look at the cost of Gaia Force here, you're talking somewhere in the region of $10. So there are versions on eBay where you can buy a playset for about $40, and individual ones tend to sell for somewhere in the region of $10. Again, these are not hard and fast facts. They vary here and there. But if you go and have a look on eBay, you'll generally pay around about $10 per Gaia Force. That is about the going rate. Now, you might have noticed here that the theme deck should cost $10 and come with two copies of Gaia Force and the rest of the deck and a booster pack. So this is clearly a little bit of a problem. What people are essentially doing is buying the theme decks. And again, please don't do this. It's scummy. But if you buy the starter deck and just sell the two Gaia Force, you're $10 up. And you've got the booster pack. And from my experience, and the sample size is low. But it seems to me that the starter deck boosters actually have really good pulls in as well. And you then end up with, obviously, all the other cards as well. Because Gaia Force might be the poster child of the theme deck. But let's not go pretending it is the only good card in there. Phoenix Mon is not a bad little card here because you get to essentially, well, it, it's just your average big vanilla card. That is to say a 10 cost to play normally 10,000 power. Now, the good news is these only tend to go for somewhere in the region of $1.50, $2 each. You can generally pick up a place out on eBay for like 8 bucks, But still, that's another like $3. That is about a third of the starter deck just on these two Phoenix Mon. Now, Phoenix Mon is the kind of vanilla non-foil level 6. There is, of course, the Foil War Greymon, which is exclusive. Now, again, I'm, I'm looking largely here at the cards where you get two copies of them, because they're obviously going to end up being the most sought after. These are the reasons to buy two theme decks rather than one. And the War Greymon generally tend to go for about $5 each. Again, there's a little bit of wiggle room here and there, but $5 is about right. So just looking at those three cards together, you've got your two Gaia Force, which is about 20 bucks, your two War Greymon, which is about another 10, your two Phoenix Mon, which is about another three, and you're talking about $33 just from those three cards or those three pairs of cards. Now, there are a couple of others where you basically get two copies of them. Giga Destroyer. Honestly, people aren't really buying and selling Giga Destroyer. It's not a particularly good card. If you search around on eBay, you might find a couple copies here or there. But they're generally being listed. They're not actually being sold. So Giga Destroyer is kind of a little bit of a moot point. And the other one we've got here is the Starter Deck Greymon. Which, to be fair, is a cool little card. It'll give Security Attack plus one which is quite nice. And you're looking at a similar thing to Phoenix Mon here. You're talking somewhere in the region of kind of two or three dollars for each of your Greymon. So if you add in a couple of Greymon for a couple of dollars each, you'll notice here that we're actually already above the secondary market cost. Like, before we've even looked at the booster pack and the cards where you get play sets, we are already above the resale cost. So, the depressing thing is, just the five exclusive cards and the two copies you get of each, that alone is worth paying $35 for the starter deck, especially bearing in mind that you get the booster pack as well. And that brings me back to the question we posed at the beginning of the video, essentially asking, is the Red Starter Deck too good? And the answer is, kind of. 
Because you see, at the moment, the picture we have got isn't a particularly fair one. At the moment, the only people, like I said, the only people that are buying this at above market value should be the people who have physical in-person tournaments now and need the physical cards. Everyone else should wait. Bandai have come out and told us explicitly that they are reprinting the starter decks. And I know that a bunch of people want to come out and go, well, they've said they're reprinting the booster boxes. They've not said they're... No, they have said they're reprinting the starter decks as well. Starter deck reprints absolutely are coming. So supply is going to be going up. Price is going to come down. They're going to be available. We are going to be fine. What has essentially happened here is that we've ended up in the middle of a perfect storm. Because you see, the red starter deck is amazing. It comes with exclusive playable cards and it comes with a booster pack. And at $10, it's frankly ridiculous value. You can argue about the fact that some of the cards only come as two ofs. But then again, there's more exclusive cards because of that. So... I really don't think paying $20 for two starter decks, getting a couple of boosters and a playset of a bunch of really good exclusive cards and extra playsets of a bunch of others, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think that's fine. The issue we've run into here is essentially that these cards have been a little bit too hard to find and it's not a conspiracy. I've done videos on this. It's not Bandai messing up. It is terribly low supply. And I know that terribly low supply has brought the scalpers out of the woodwork. And I'm sorry about that. But as supply goes up, the opportunities for scalpers are not going to be there as much. And the scalpers will not maybe entirely go away. But largely the scalpers will leave. Or at least they'll be a lot less prevalent. So, yes, it is too good in the context of the low supply we've got at the moment but make no mistake about it as time goes by supply will rise and what we're really going to be left with is just some awesome starter decks now something that is really really important here supply will go up in the short term but do remember inevitably there will come a day when these starter decks actually do stop being printed we're not there yet. We're probably months, maybe a year or two away from that. But there will come a point where the game has moved on and we've got lots of new sets and new starter decks and all of that. And eventually, inevitably, like with every product, they will stop being printed. Please make sure you pick up the starter decks, especially the red one, before that happens. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's my thoughts on the red starter deck and why it's good and why it's a problem and why it won't be forever. Stop panicking. Supply will come. Be patient. It will get there. But I want to know what you think about this, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we have a chat about Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far, the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.